Spooky. I like it. What's up everyone and welcome to Sunday with Ola 90! Holy shit, 90? What? You know what I think is the coolest thing about saying Sunday with Ola 90? I've been writing 90 song ideas since I started this series. The Sunday with Ola riff challenges that I've been making every week has or contains at least two riffs and sometimes three or four, which means 90 times three f loads of riffs. Just saying, it's a lot of riffs, man. Hello. All right, before I start, I just want to share something that I'm incredibly proud about uh, today. For that, I need this camera on a gimbal. Look at this. I'm going to show you something really cool in the other room, but I have to take off this first. This has me really excited, actually. Uh, let's go. Check this out. So, you know, last week you saw that we had complete chaos in the office. Well, look at this. It's clean now. Well, almost clean. We still have a bunch of shit here, but let me show you this. Let me show what we've done. So this is the entrance. We, you've seen that before. The thing that has happened here is that we had two more rooms here, but we put those two rooms together and now we have this. And here's Frederick. He's making, oh. what are you making? You're making the custom. This, no, this is the member's cup. Ooh, member's cup. Yeah. So this is for. Oh, no, no, that's, a, that's not it. But you know this one, right? Yes. This is the one when you put the name of that's uh... Dalton Rodiger. So a member <laughs> cup right there. So Frederick is hard at work printing member cups. But what's cool is that we made this really big printing room and also a place where we can store all the CDs and you know Louise and Maria can pack like orders right here. And just a really big spot for uh, you know CDs and tab books and whatnot. Look at this. How cool is that? It's really f***ing cool. So we have like a proper warehouse room for all the merch. We're freeing up a bunch of space here. A lot of the stuff that's in here. So a lot of the t-shirts that are in here, for instance, on the merch that we're storing are gonna go to that other room. And uh, then we... Oh, sh okay. 360. I, I can respect that little uh, gimbal thing right there. Anyways. I'm trying to... There it is. Hello. So, incredibly proud about that, obviously. And also a small little intro for you right there. Thank you so much. Hello, we're back. So yeah, really cool. I'm extremely excited about that. I mean, those are the small things that, that make me incredibly proud of what we have created in this office right here. I mean, remember back 11 years ago? I mean, I was sitting in my bedroom making videos. It's just, man, I'm actually really, really proud of, of where I am today. All of this because of you guys, also because of Solar Guitars, obviously, since I started that, I've been able to do a lot more. Very proud dad right here. Let's head over to the news. All right, Meshuga reveal surprise amp shakeup during the recording of new album Immutable. So, if you're into guitar gear, obviously we're all really interested of hearing what Meshuggah are using. Because Meshuggah are on the forefront when it comes to, you know, metal guitar tone. I mean, they are pushing everyone else forward, in my opinion. I mean, they did it back in the day. Go listen to Destroy Your Racing Proof. If there's one album that has stood the test of time, it's that album. I mean, listen to it today. It's way more modern sounding than a lot of other bands. Let's just say that. So, in that aspect, I think Mashuga is a very cool band to check in on when it comes to the guitar gear. Okay, Total Guitar has been talking to Morton of uh, Mashuga, and they're saying Mashuga pioneered the sound of gent long before the onatapaka. What the f that means? Uh, became a genre, and the key 
uh, to their tone in the early game, changing brand of guttural extended range chug was the Mesa Dual Rectifier. So, uh, amplifier that was used in the beginning and also on Chaos Fair, which is my, which is my favorite sounding uh, Michel Gara album when it comes to the guitar tone. But their latest release, Immutable, saw the heavy trendsetters turn to the latest incarnation of a metal staple. Okay, what was it? This time I found the EVH5150 <laughs> 300 watt heads to be exactly what we were looking for. They had the gain, control and mesa boogie ness we needed, but with a more raw and unbridled kind of tone. They sounded less predictable, more organic. There you go. They were using EVH5150s. So what else were they using? There were changes in the pedal front too. Instead of using the Fortin 33 pedal as a booster, I actually ended up using Michelin Source Precision Drive. Hello. That was suggested by our singer Jens, as he had one. The gate on it isn't really that all that good, it's cool for live use, but in the studio, it needs some work. But the sound of the precision drive going into the EVH was superb. Okay, there we go. I would use the preamp of the EVH second channel and run it through the power app of the uh, Mesa Boogie Roadster, then out through EVH cabs. For the clean parts, I used my Roland JC120 head. Holy shit, man, that's a single path right there. They went with the EVH5150, which in my opinion is one of the past decade <laughs> most metal sounding amplifier. It's become you know, much like the PV5150 back in the day, the EVH5150 is just a, uh, uh, it, it's a classic already. And a lot of bands are using those, live and in studio. And, uh, okay, that's cool. My sugar are using EVH heads right now. Just saying. I'm always very curious about what Meshuggah are using, because they do have incredible tone. And obviously, I think for live, they're probably gonna use like the quad cortex. That, that's what I heard. Uh, but the cool thing about the quad chorus is, is that you can, much like a Kemper, profile a single path, ready to go. Is this the future of guitar cabs? Meet the ultra slim flat panel Model 20. Look at this asshole. So, Eminent Technology 2.5 inch thick cabinets weigh half as much as a 1x12, but offers the diaphragm area of a 4x12. So look at this. Eminent Technology has debuted the Model 20, a slim speaker cabinet that saves on weight and space while offering an expanded frequency range. Okay, so it looks like this. It offers the same speaker cone diaphragm area through the Electromagnetics actuators. Okay, it offers less distortion, less compression, and much better dispersion of signal compared with a traditional cabinet. Your full tone will reach a wider range of listeners in different positions. It promises to handle tones on octave higher and lower than a regular cab too. Very interesting, look at that. That looks not that metal, <laughs> just saying. You, I mean, if you roll up to a gig with this, it's not as cool as if you roll up like a full stack of 4x12s, just saying. But I will be incredibly interested of trying one of these out. Holy shit, man. What if this is the future of guitar cabinets right there? I mean, th the thing about guitar cabinets is that usually the more of a bigger size you have, the better the bass and the bass response. The more you scatter out the speakers, the more air you will push. There are no demo videos just yet, but we'll be keeping a very close eye on this one. It's too good to be true. You know, I, I need to try this out before I, I knock it or, you know, praise it. This is incredibly interesting in my opinion. Price, 2600 bucks each. Price includes shipping. I guess that's in the US. All right, In Flames have released a new single. And in a time where, you know, there's bands like The Halo Effect, which is basically a portion of the old In Flames members doing In Flames music, In Flames comes back and gives even more In Flames music. <laughs> Might be a little confusing, but you know what? I like this song. It has a very blinded by fear type of uh, vibe to it. And you know, it's fast, it's cool. I like In Flames, man. I much more prefer Old In Flames, but I think this is one of the best songs that I've heard from them in years. So, very interested. They have announced a US tour together with who? Fit for an Autopsy, great band, Orbit Culture. Fuck yeah, that band. Orbit Culture needs to go out on tour in the US. They need to be so fucking big. They're so cool. Such a cool band. Also, they play solo. A little bit, maybe. But you know what? A lot of people should listen to Orbit Culture because they have kick-ass songs and kick-ass music. You know, I'm, I'm just sitting here like this, waiting for them to explode. They're doing it right there. now. They're, they're so fucking good. 
Orbit Culture, everyone. Don't skimp out on that name, okay? Orbit Culture, there you go. Okay, Ultimate Thrasher's creator has also released a new video, uh, Become Immortal, which is a really cool video because they use old clips of creator playing live mixed with new clips of them being old. <laughs> you know, I mean, creator is one of the oldest thrash bands out there, holding and keeping the flag high, baby. And it's just nice to see a band that's clinging on to their sound, you know, and just keep on doing the same shit over and over. That, okay, that sounds bad, but that's not how I wanted to portray it. They just, you know, they're like Slayer. Slayer is Slayer. Huh? <laughs> it's a good song. I, I just want... It's a good song. Just listen to it, okay? All right. Maybe not necessarily metal or guitar related, but it is home studio related. And you know, as a home studio uh, fan, I thought this was a pretty cool piece of news because it's also incorporating Swedish brands and uh, Swedish things. So, no. No hack required as IKEA, ha, and Swedish House Mafia, ha, launch new music production desk. So, IKEA and, <laughs> and Swedish House Mafia are doing a home studio desk for, uh, for, for regular people like you and me. You know, I'm a big fan of IKEA. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a Swede. Basically, I live and breathe IKEA. You know, you get taught from an early age when you're like four to five to assemble a Billy bookshelf. That's just in our blood, man. So seeing that they're working and catering a piece of furniture to the home musician or the studio mus musician, that, that makes me proud about my country. Okay, so what do we have? IKEA and Swedish Half Mafia have embarked on the next part of their mission to democratize Music production at home, announcing the Obegrensad, which means basically limitless. Uh, this compromise a music production desk, an armchair, and a turntable. Uh, okay. Where is it? I clicked on a link, but I don't think that's... Uh, yeah, that's just other more expensive brands. Okay, go back. So, I, this is the only picture they've shared? Uh, very interesting. The Ubegrensad design supports creating, playing, and enjoying, and even just setting the mood, says... Ugh. Swedish House Mafia. We've seen plenty of music production-friendly IKEA desk hacks down the years, but this new model gives you an off-the-shelf option to consider. It features two speaker stands and a pull-out lower shelf for a MIDI keyboard. Okay. They also have a turntable that's also going to be a part of this series. Okay, that's uh, weird, but cool. The collection will be launched globally in the autumn and is set to include more than 20 home furnishing products. I mean, if you can't wait until autumn, there is already a really good desk that even I had at home uh, from IKEA that is really good for production and computer and gaming or whatever. It's called Frede. And it looks like this. And I, I bet a bunch of you guys out there already know about this desk. It's an incredible desk for... Uh, I mean, what is this? This is like uh, 320 bucks, maybe, or something like that. Which is okay. Uh, but at least it's a lot less expensive than something like this, for instance, or what the other studio brands are offering. So it's going to be really nice to see what this new Obegrensad will uh, incorporate and how it will be priced. Very exciting for us home studio guys, okay? Let me take a look at this. Look at that. So cool. And he has the... Uh, does he, ha he has the speakers on the side there. I had j this exact same uh, setup, just as this guy right here. Except I didn't have that uh, robot up there. But very close. Last but not least, what if Limp Bizkit wrote the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme song? I mean, what if? Uh, haven't we all wondered this? <laughs> Shit. Anyways, this guy, Munich Productions. Made a mashup. And I have never seen this guy before. Who is he? He has 41,000 subscribers, man. <laughs> That's actually very good. All right, this earned a sub from Old Langland. Thank you so much. That was great. Well done. And that, my friends, was the news. Adventures with Ola. I'm picking up Jen today. Jen Majura. Oh.
You know, I was meant to meet uh, Jen when uh, she would be playing with Evanescence here next week. Uh, and then unfortunately she was out of the band and she wouldn't come here. So I figured let's just bring her over anyways. We'll record a bunch of videos. So I'm on my way to pick her up at the airport and then we're going to record some videos today. It's going to be amazing. But first... McDonald's breakfast, baby. Okay, I'm at the airport. I'm going to see if I can try and stalk Jen. You know, give her some of that stalker medicine. Da, 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 da. Jump at your, uh, there she is. Ha ha ha. See ya. How does it feel being stalked? Stalker. 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 Stalking in Majora. Hello. <laughs> hey. Hello. Taxi. That way I can control that. All I'm right. Not in the shot. So, <laughs> how does it feel being stalked? Well, you when know. the stalker becomes stalked. <laughs> well, you know, business as usual. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. No, you're used to it. Uh, what, yeah. a, what a rock star! Holy shit! <laughs> I, I didn't plan anything. Why not? Uh, because I fuck. We would just uh, wing it. Okay. All right, we just recorded a uh, coffee with Ola. The first time I've had a guest the second time. So that was cool, coffee with Jen. Uh, we've had lunch, but now we're gonna set things up for a couple of other videos. So, you know, getting productive, man. It's good. Hey, buddy, big city. Hey, buddy, big city. All right, so now that Jen is here, uh, she's gonna print her own t shirt. So you should, uh, there's a print button here. You should do that right now? Yes, you like, I just that. push it. Yes. Okay, ready? No, hang on. I'm printing my own t shirt. I'm very excited about this. Like oh, okay, sorry, that, that button. Hey, don't! Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I didn't know. But I wanted to push the button! So, uh, well, let's just pretend you pushed the button. What is happening now? Like so now right it's... now it's printing. Okay. So it does a film, much like this one, right here. This is hot. This is hot. This is a heat press right there. Okay. And then we're going to heat press it to the t-shirt. Okay. Press this all the way down. All the way down? You, really? Yeah. And then... And I'm going to hold it? Oh, like shit. That. Oh, like that. Jesus. Yeah. So we just apply a layer of that so that it sticks all over. That's a whole lot of steps for a t-shirt. It, it is. It's not as easy as you think to I print a no t-shirt. So now, okay. Okay. Now we're gonna do, it's, it's called a cold peel. There are so many steps to do that. But it's it's mostly to have it last in your wash. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. Just in the washing machine. Right yeah, okay, gotcha. We do for you guys. We're doing proper <laughs> shit here, man. It's no yeah. bullshit. Oh, it's, it's okay. There oh, you go. yeah. But it's not done. Okay. Yeah, now push with all of your. I can't. So, yeah. This doesn't make you look too I strong. I know, right? It sucks. I say. suck. And there you go. Steaming up and done. You ready? Wow. What do you say? That Ooh, looks yeah. great. You there like you go. It? That's how you print a t shirt in Sweden. All right, we just finished recording uh, a demo of the Soldano Mini Slow. How did it go, Jen? It was okay. Was it fun? It was fun. How is this room? Is it this like the is most this, badass room you've ever been in? Is, is this the, the Wonderwall room? Come on. What do you mean? You had a Wonderwall room. Don't you remember the Wonderwall room? No. When you moved in, you played Wonderwall. This must be the Wonderwall room. Whoa. Oh, what? How the f do you remember stuff like that? I, I am I your number one stalker. Oh my God, <laughs> holy shit. I, not even I remember that. Holy shit. Well, look at this. This is Jen in the recording room right here. She's like, she's, she's right there, look. That's the stalker. She's right there. It's a little scary, but <laughs> uh, goodbye, Jen. Hello. <laughs> All right, Jen. It's been a really good 
two days. Yes. But uh, it's time to go home now. And you're happy that I'm leaving, right? Yes. No, <laughs> no. It's uh, it's actually weekend. I'm going to go pick up my my kid from uh, from school. Nice. And uh, a cab is here to pick you up. So perfect. Thank and you so I much have for the best T-shirt ever. Uh, debatable. <laughs> but you made it here, and it, it looks good. Looks good on you. Woo! So thank you so much, Jen. Give me a hug. Mm. See you soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Uh, goodbye, camera. <laughs> Question of the day from Bigus86. Hey Apollo, with solo guitars, is there any guitar you really want to have made but is either an unpopular option or would appeal to a very niche market? If so, what would it be? Keep up the good work. Thumbs up. Thank you so much. That's actually a legit good question. Uh, to be honest, I've already kind of made a lot of the, the guitars that I wanted to see in the market that might have not been, you know very sought after. I mean, in the early beginning, I pushed Evertune really hard. And at that time, you know, not too many people knew about Evertune, but it has become something that a lot of people are using nowadays. So it's more about, you know, believing in an innovation, pushing it, and, you know, that's what we did with the Evertune, for instance. But uh, something that I thought about that is a little, a little tough is I would love to make you know, smaller guitars for like, uh, for kids and whatnot. The the challenge there, you know, I've, I've done like demos of, um, what's it called, the, uh, like a mini, what was it? A mini, like, like it was a mini Jackson, I think, and then a mini Ibanez, like the PGM Paul Gilbert small guitar, and I thought those were really cool, but they're very, like, they're very cheap, you know, in the feel. It, it's, it's almost, a toy guitar, in a way. I would love to be able to make something that is, you know, three-quarter uh, size guitar for kids, but that would be like high spec, for instance. But the problem is that it becomes very expensive to do something like this, and this is a guitar that, you know, you buy for your kid. So it, it, it's it, it's a, it's a very niche field. Like, who would want something like this? I'll, I know for sure that I would want to have like a quarter inch guitar to just sit in my lap in, uh, in like when I'm sitting watching TV or something, just to play around with. And I can just give it to my daughter or my son and they could play on it and just you know, something simple, but still have, you know, like really good specs and, you know, play well and all that. That I think it, that, that could be really tough, but something I, I would really want to do, basically. You know, I'm gonna work on it, okay? Thank you. All right, so before I stop, I want to talk about Sunday with all the Rift Challenge. You know, Sunday with all the Rift Challenge has become something really, really big, and a lot of people are in on it, which makes me incredibly proud. And you guys are fucking killing it, I must say. But as the segment is getting bigger in terms of the amount of people that are in on it, uh, as if you saw my live stream, for instance, you can see that members are a very big part of this, but you know, the more members I gain, the more members will take over the live stream. So I still want to keep this uh, fair for everyone uh, in terms of it, the ability or the chance to be featured on the Sunday with Ola Contender live stream on Mondays. How it is right now is that it's basically two hours plus of me trying to cater to members and also cater to non-members. And I just want it to be fair. So I've decided to make a new system for this. I'm gonna continue on with the live streams, but instead of just doing all the members, I'm gonna dedicate the first hour to members only. And then I'm gonna do a giveaway or raffle in my Discord for members. So basically I will pick like 20 or 25 of my members, cater to those in the first hour. And then in the second half hour, I will just go on YouTube and follow the algorithm in like incognito mode or something like that. So just setting like a, a specific time, it's gonna be one hour and 30 minutes to start off with, okay? Just gonna try it out and then it means that if you're a member, you know, you get a little higher chance of getting featured and uh, I think that's fair. I think the live streams are really good in the sense that I get to watch way more contributions than if I would feature them in the Sunday with Ola. But the thing when I switched over to live streams is that a lot of people do it to get featured, which was not necessarily the point of creating this Rift Challenge. It's more about just getting people to write. But uh, at least if I do it like this, starting on Monday, 
you know, I think it would be more fair if it becomes bigger and bigger because that's where we are right now. I've created a monster, <laughs> an incredible monster, I might add. But I, I just think moving forward, that's going to be as fair as possible. Uh, everyone gets a chance and, uh, you know, non-members will get a bigger chance, in my opinion. So just a little explanation. If you want to be in Son of a Fall Rift Challenge, you can download the drums in the description of this video, write your riffs. Tomorrow we will have the live stream where I'm checking out Son of Wafola 89 contenders. Okay, so for 90 you have an extra week. Okay, just so you understand that, uh, the, how that works. Anyways, guys, uh, thank you so much for Sunday with Ola. I hope you had a great time. If you want to support me and what we're doing here, you can go to oldlanguageshop.com, get some merch, get something at least. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys, okay? Goodbye.